Psalm 91. All things bright and beautiful. All things bright and beautiful, all creatures great and small, all things wise and wonderful, the Lord God made them all. Each little flower that opens, each little church as a summer student helping people who are feeling socially isolated because of COVID-19 and all the restrictions that have come with it. I know I've definitely felt socially isolated during this time. I miss going to church and doing other activities that have been put on hold. I'm hoping to reach out to lots of people living in paradise in many different ways like talking on the phone and checking in, getting groceries, helping with yard work, and anything else you may need help with during this time. All you have to do is reach out to me at 782-3071 or email hiachelp at hotmail.com. To get started this week, I'm going to be doing my first online concert through the Holy Innocence Facebook Live at 2 p.m. on Tuesday. I know I miss going to watch live music, so for anyone who wants to tune in, I'll be singing some hymns and some of my favorite songs. And on Thursday of this week, I'll be doing our first Zoom bingo for anyone who wants to join. If you're interested in joining our online bingo game, email hiachelp at hotmail.com expressing your interest, and I will bring you the bingo cards and help anyone with getting the Zoom set up on their computer to join us. I hope you'll join me at our online events this week and reach out for any other services. Thanks. Good morning and welcome in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to our time of worship and celebration this morning. It's certainly good to be with you from Holy Innocence Church and Reverend Byron, Tracy, and Deacon Dave. 
We have many other people in our chat room. I invite you, of course, to chat to one another. We're not able to be in person, but we can still, of course, chat with one another in here. Of course, Eleanor, we have uh, Irma, Travis, Colin, Sylvia, and Brenda. Good to see you this morning. Who else do we have? We have all kinds of people in our little chat room here. Gail, good to see you. Della, Elizabeth, Betty, Ruth, Greg, I'm bored. Dora, we have uh, Donna, Rod, Ada, Heather, how you doing? Good to have you with us. How are you? Still working on puzzles, I bet. Myrtle, Phil, we have uh, Angela, good to have you on. Marie, Don, and a few others there as I scroll down below. This morning in our announcement, you got one very important announcement there this morning uh, with Natasha, and I will upload that video, video later so that you can see and also the details of our ministry for the next two months. A couple of other announcements. Uh, our new camera, uh, we're using it now. We kind of have it hooked up pretty temporarily, and uh, we're getting pretty close to meeting the current amount of $1,700, $1,800 to pay for it. Uh, we will have to have a few more dollars to complete the work. We're looking at putting our camera on the wall, and there's some extra costs with uh, doing that, uh, but we are able to use it, and as time goes on, we will have it on the wall. We're having a lot of work done to our garden and our garden mural. I'd like to thank uh, Claudine and family for that. And as a Mr. Beck, who's going to now start work on a mural. And so Claudine uh, primed that uh, ugly looking gray wall down there behind the garden. Looks better already. And so that's on the go and we're accepting donations for that. Uh, of course, financial donations is always good for paint, but we're also interested in other donations. It can be paint brushes, uh, empty containers, paint thinner, uh, all those kind of things that are needed as well. And so that's, that's a good thing. Uh, we can't have a regular memorial flower service this year in the middle of July, it would be July the 12th, that Sunday, but we're going to have a virtual service to still honor and remember those who have uh, gone before us. So 10.30 on the 12th of July, we will be having our flower service, though it will be virtual, and so spread the word on that. You may also know, of course, with the changing levels, as the government have announced this week, we're on level two, and technically churches can open. However, many of our churches, including the Anglican Church in this diocese, will not be opening until after Labor Day at the earliest. There's a lot of things in those regulations which we're going to have to get our head around. Our vestry is going to meet tomorrow evening to put a team together uh, to address those different things. Just a few things, for example, to let you know where we're headed and why we're pretty well not opening this summer. Uh, maximum of 50 be allowed. It's including participants in the service leaders. We'll have to register before we come to worship. Uh, there's no nursery, Sunday school, confirmation, young people's programs, no cafe before worship, food, fellowship, uh, no congregational singing or choir singing during service. Uh, September, if nothing changes, there will be no rent or fundraising and no fellowship events, especially with us, with food before and after service and many events we go out into. So these things don't change, and the things we have to change uh, because of everyday uh, processing around here with extra cleaning and working around all of that. Our vestry tomorrow evening is going to try to get our heads around that this summer. So hopefully in service live will be person to person worship will be available uh, this coming fall. And so we begin our worship. <clears throat> but you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people in order that you may proclaim the mighty acts of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most, Most merciful, merciful God, God we, we confess that, that we have sinned, sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, pardon of you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. 
Lord, open our lips, and our mouths shall proclaim your praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, you have taught us through your Son that love fulfills the law. May we love you with all our heart, all our soul, all our mind, and all our strength. And may we love our neighbor as ourselves, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. After all these things, God tested Abraham. He said to him, Abraham. And Abraham said, Here I am. Take your son, your only son Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah, and offer him there as a burnt offering, as one of the mountains that I shall show you. So Abraham rose early in the morning, saddled his donkey, and took two of his young men with him and his son Isaac. He cut the wood for the burnt offering and set out and went to the place in the distance that God had shown him. On the third day, Abraham looked up and saw the place far away. Then Abraham said to his young men, Stay here with the donkey. The boy and I will go over there. We will worship, and then we will come back to you. Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it on his son Isaac and he himself carried the fire and the knife. So the two of them walked together. Isaac said to his father Abraham, Father, and Abraham said, Here I am, my son. Isaac said, The fire and the wood are here, but where is the lamb for a burnt offering? Abraham said, God himself will provide the lamb for a burnt offering, my son. So the two of them walked on together. When they came to the place that God had shown him, Abraham built an altar there and laid the wood in order. He bound his son Isaac, laid him on the altar on top of the wood. Then Abraham reached out his hand and took the knife to kill his son. But the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And Abraham said, Here I am. God said, Do not lay your hand on the boy or do anything to him. For now I know that you fear God, since you have not withhold your son, your only son, from me. And Abraham looked up and saw a ram caught in a thicket by its horns. Abraham went and took the ram and offered it up as a burnt offering instead of his son. So Abraham called that place, The Lord will provide. As it is said to this day, on the mount of the Lord it shall be provided. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. The Lord be with you. And also, also with, with you. you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory, Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. Jesus said, Whoever welcomes you welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. Whoever welcomes a prophet in the name of a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. And whoever welcomes a righteous person in the name of a righteous person will receive the reward of the righteous. And whoever gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones in the name of a disciple, truly I tell you, none of these will lose their reward. The Gospel of Christ. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. Dear God, we give you thanks for your many blessings to us. For you help us to use our minds and our hearts to come to you in new and different ways. Be with us now as we look into your word, that it will speak to us, that we may speak to your world. In your Son's name we pray, Jesus Christ, Lord. Amen. Amen. Jesus says, Give a cup of cold water. Simple act. Somebody came into your house. You would take a glass out of your cupboard or cabinet. Maybe put it under a tap till the water ran cold. Fill it and give it to the person so that they could quench their thirst. 
a very simple act could change a person's day, a conversation that could go with it, to complete a thirst, and a thirst may be of companionship. But this simple act can also reflect mightier acts that can change a person's life, change the world. In some ways now, I think we're in what one could call a new dark age. Students of history would know that we went through an area that we called an era called the Dark Ages. And today, some things are similar. Many people dispute science when it comes to environment or sickness or other things. Institutions have a different role to play and some doubt all institutions and work against it. The importance and central place of the individual is taken over from community working together talk to many community groups and organizations and find that their work has increased, but people who are willing to work and give themselves community has decreased. And as we have learned again, racism is now revealed to be much more powerful and strong and prevalent in community than many of us would want to admit. People recognizing differences between each other color, race, beliefs, places where one is from. Sexism is still prevalent and you can see it just in the different ways that people are hired and people are paid and treated. Homophobia. And during time of Snowmageddon and now COVID virus, we realize how many justice issues are front and center, even though some of us don't want to see it or face the truth. Where so many people live so close to the bottom of social strata and society, so close to poverty, they lack basics that life need. The world can be a dark place, a dangerous place, a vindictive place, selfish place, people thinking of themselves, rejecting others, saying horrible things, and doing even worse. There is much darkness, a shadow in some way is kind of cast itself over the land and over people's lives, leaving people feeling poor in spirit, broken-hearted, troubled in mind. Family and friends are going through very difficult times. People are unhappy, hurt, lack joy, peace, and hope in their life. Wow, a lot of difficult words, a lot of darkness. But then again, we are people of the light. We live as followers of Jesus Christ. We bring light into a dark world. That is our task. You may say, how can I really change the darkness in the world? Little old me, how can I make a difference? Well, several times since I've been in this community, and the same thing have happened to me in other communities, I've noticed some small things that sometimes speak loudly. One night I was driving home, and I believe it was over Sunday evening for something, and I noticed as I drove down Paradise Road, it seemed like some kind of a light in our church building. So I drove down, opened the main doors, walked in. We had baptism that morning. The lights on the back wall, the candles, two little candles on the wall were still lit. In our excitement after the service and families and talking and fellowship, we forgot to extinguish them. But those two little tiny candles in a building that's at least 40 by 80 kind of flickered, and the light was the ceiling, right to the front of the church, the altar, and the back wall. Those two little tiny candles had such a presence in a building the size of this, which much darkness. Each of us are like those tiny little flickering candles. In and itself, it doesn't seem very powerful, but the tiniest little light, the tiniest little candle, can light and draw attention to the largest of dark spaces. Each of us, you know, have been given gifts and talents to serve God in many and various ways. Each of us have influence. Influence family and friends. Influence in places of work and sport, and fellowship, and community organizations, and school, government, 
Each of us have influence. We have a voice. We also have actions that we can do. Just like that simple glass of water. Small things that can make a big difference. Finding it within yourself to smile at that clerk behind the checkout who's having a rough day. Coffee with a person who's going through a difficult time in their family or relationship. Making space for people to express themselves in the way that they are. In the spiritual world sometimes it's called holding space with another so that another person can have an opportunity to be with you, be themselves and express what they're going through at that particular point in time. Simply saying hello to a stranger. Taking time to listen to somebody who looks and sounds and believes in things that are very different than you. Simple words, simple acts, that might be the only act of kindness that that person know during the whole day. Change that person's hour, their day, their life, change the world. Acts of hospitality, acts of welcome can change another's world. But first, many times we have to change ourselves. It requires having courage to leave our comfort zone, to do new and different things. Also to go and do in different places in our own hearts and minds and face what is there. Is there anything that are lacking? Are my thoughts not appropriate? Is there any prejudice there for any reason whatsoever? Now we'll have to deal with it. Jesus invites us to step up and step out of the darkness that is in the world. To step back in with light. Acts of kindness and courage and authority with the light that is before us, within us, and above us. Offer good news that this world need not be in darkness. People need not live in the shadow of darkness and death. To bring the light of fate, hope, and love, care, kindness, and people's lives. This week, by your words and by your actions, welcome other people by your light, Christ's light, into the kingdom of God. Dear God, we give you thanks to stay for your word. May we have courage that the tiniest act of kindness, of word, may indeed be a light in another person's darkness. That as another light of fate is lit, this world of darkness will be less till there is light, your light, your son's light, Jesus Christ, the Lord. Amen. Let us confess our faith as we say. I, I believe, believe in God, God the, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. As we are in God's presence, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, we believe you welcome us all to your banquet table. May we open our arms to embrace you. May we see you in the face of a stranger. May we welcome you in the love of a friend. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. We believe you welcome the abandoned, the misfit, the wretched to your feast. Forgive us for the times we have allowed our prejudice to overrule and rejected you because you are different, ostracized, or despised. Lord, hear our prayer. We believe that there is beauty hidden in every person. Forgive us for the times we have failed to see your face because you are disabled, poor, or homeless. Lord, hear our prayer. 
We believe we are all precious in your sight. Forgive us for when we have counted you unworthy of our love, for when we have been indifferent to your cries. Lord, hear our prayer. We believe we are called to share life together as members of one family. Forgive us for when we have been unconcerned for your suffering and fail to see others in your worldwide community as you do. Lord, hear our prayer. We are all created in God's image, redeemed by Christ, filled with the Holy Spirit. We are all invited to feast at God's banquet table. We are welcomed into God's eternal kingdom with all the peoples of the earth. Our Our Father in heaven, heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks Thanks be be to God. God. Our brother, all who 